seed time and harvest. Let another query now be considered, which gives much trouble to many earnest thinkers before science answers it. Is anything real of which the physical senses are cognizant? Everything is as real as you make it, and no more so. What you see, hear, feel is a mode of consciousness and can have no other reality than the sense you entertain of it. It is dangerous to rest upon the evidence of the senses, for this evidence is not absolute and therefore not real in our sense of the word. All that is beautiful and good in your individual consciousness is permanent. That which is not so is elusive and fading. My insistence upon a proper understanding of the unreality of matter and evil arises from their deleterious effects, physical, moral, and intellectual, upon the race. All forms of error are uprooted in science on the same basis whereby sickness is healed, namely by the establishment, through reason, revelation, and science, of the nothingness of every claim of error, even the doctrine of heredity and other physical causes. You demonstrate the process of science, and it proves my view conclusively that mortal mind is the cause of all disease. Destroy the mental sense of the disease, and the disease itself disappears. Destroy the sense of sin, and sin itself disappears. Material and sensual consciousness are mortal, Hence, they must sometime and in some way be reckoned unreal. That time has partially come or my words would not have been spoken. Jesus has made the way plain, so plain that all are without excuse who walk not in it. But this way is not the path of physical science human philosophy, or mystic psychology. The talent and genius of the centuries have wrongly reckoned. They have not based upon revelation their arguments and conclusions as to the source and resources of being, its combinations, phenomena, and outcome, but have built instead upon the sand of human reason, They have not accepted the simple teaching and life of Jesus as the only true solution of the perplexing problem of human existence. Sometimes it is said by those who fail to understand me that I monopolize, and this is said because ideas akin to mine have been held by a few spiritual thinkers in all ages. So they have, but in a far different form. Healing has gone on continually. Yet healing, as I teach it, has not been practiced since the days of Christ. What is the cardinal point of the difference in my metaphysical system? This, that by knowing the unreality of disease, sin, and death, you demonstrate the allness of God. This difference wholly separates my system from all others. The reality of these so-called existences I deny because they are not to be found in God. And this system is built on him 
as the sole cause. It would be difficult to name any previous teachers save Jesus and his apostles who have thus taught. If there be any monopoly in my teaching, it lies in this utter reliance upon the one God to whom belong all things. Life is God, or spirit, the super sensible, eternal. The universe and man are the spiritual phenomena of this one infinite mind. Spiritual phenomena never converge toward aught but infinite deity. Their gradations are spiritual and divine. They cannot collapse or lapse into their opposites, for God is their divine principle. They live because he lives, and they are eternally perfect because he is perfect and governs them in the truth of divine science, whereof God is the Alpha and Omega, the center and circumference. To attempt the calculation of his mighty ways from the evidence before the material senses is fatuous. It is like commencing with the minus sign to learn the principle of positive mathematics. God was not in the whirlwind. He is not the blind force of a material universe. Mortals must learn this. Unless pursued by their fears, they would endeavor to hide from his presence under their own falsities and call in vain for the mountains of unholiness to shield them from the penalty of error. Jesus taught us to walk over, not into, or with, the currents of matter or mortal mind. His teachings bared the lions in their dens. He turned the water into wine, he commanded the winds, he healed the sick, all in direct opposition to human philosophy and so-called natural science. He annulled the laws of matter, showing them to be laws of mortal mind, not of God. He showed the need of changing this mind and its abortive laws. He demanded a change of consciousness and evidence and effected this change through the higher laws of God. The palsied hand moved despite the boastful sense of physical law and order. Jesus took not to human consciousness nor to the evidence of the senses. He heeded not the taunt That withered hand looks very real and feels very real. But he cut off this vain boasting and destroyed human pride by taking away the material evidence. If his patient was a theologian of some bigoted sect, a physician or a professor of natural philosophy, according to the ruder sought then prevalent, he never thanked Jesus for restoring his senseless hand, but neither red tape nor indignity hindered the divine process. Jesus required neither cycles of time nor thought in order to mature fitness for perfection and its possibilities. He said that the kingdom of heaven is here and is included in mind, that while ye say there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest, I say, look up, not down, for your fields are already white for the harvest.
and gather the harvest by mental, not material processes. The laborers are few in this vineyard of mind sowing and reaping, but let them apply to the waiting grain the curving sickle of mind's eternal circle and bind it with bands of soul. <laughs>